Welcome once again to Python from the ground up. We are on to number five. We have so far looked at all of the basic stuff that you'd expect to find in a programming language such as uh, input and output, variables, um, loops and conditions. Okay, all of the stuff that you'd expect to be built into uh, a programming language. We're going to have a look today at modules. Okay, so modules in Python are a way that you can extend the functionality of the language. Um, to start off with, there's a number of built in commands that you can use, and we've been using some of those, like print, for instance, and input. Um, but there might be a few times when you think, oh, there's something really specific I want to do, like, for instance, um, getting some advanced maths functions or being able to output something on the screen in a graphical format rather than text. Okay. Now, um, when you install Python, you get a whole bunch of additional modules that allow you to extend that functionality. Um, but you can also install third party modules, which will further extend the functionality. We're going to have a look at two modules today which ship with Python. Uh, they are called the Turtle module, which allows you to draw some simple graphics on the screen in a sort of Etch-a-Sketch style way. Etch-a-Sketch is probably an outdated reference for kids today. Let me just make a note. Never ever compare Python to Etch-a-Sketch ever again. There we go. Uh, and also random, so you'll be able to create uh, random numbers. Now, before we get started, it's very, very important uh, to note um, every module has a name. And if you name your files the same thing as that module name, you are going to run into errors. Okay, so the modules that we are going to be using today are turtle and random. So if you call your Python file turtle or you call your pro uh, Python file random, you are going to get some errors, things are not going to work properly. I have created a new module and I have called it a new module, a new file, and I have called it modules. Okay. Um, now let's, we'll start off with the random module um, just because it's going to be quicker to explain that and then we can move on to uh, setting up some graphics with Python. The way that we add the functionality of these additional modules is by using the import command. Okay, so if I say import random, what that will do is it will search for the module called random and it will pull in all of the functionality of that module so that we can use it in our program. But it keeps it nice and separated using something called a namespace, uh, which you don't really need to know that much about at this stage, um, but um, just, just trust me when I say that namespaces are a good thing for keeping code separate. Okay, so let's say we wanted to print out a random number. Let's say we wanted to print out a random number between, I don't know, naught and a hundred. We can use the random modules rand range function. Okay, what did I say? Between naught and a hundred? We can do this. Okay, let's just have a look at this. If I run my code, control shift F10, there we go, we've got 23 there. What have I got here? 82. 0, 45, 91, 52, 85. It's going to give me a random number every time I run it. Let's have a look what's going on. This first line here, I import the random module. Now, any functions that come along with that random module, I have to prefix with random dot. Okay, so what we're saying here is use the function rand range, which is part of the random module. Okay, now the way that rand range works it's sort of similar to the range function. So if you remember the range function generated a range of numbers between zero and the number just prior to the one that you specify here. Uh, what random.randrange does is it generates those range of numbers and then it picks one at random. Okay, so if I put uh, random.randrange uh, 50, it will give me a random number between naught and 49. Okay. Um, it's given me 35 in this case, and 4, and 10, and 29, and so on and so forth. 
Okay. Now the syntax of rand range is exactly the same as the syntax for range. Okay, which means if you think back to a couple of lessons ago, uh, lesson 4a in the series, we looked at the range function. What if I said to you, I want you to write some code which will generate a random number between um, 6 and 38. Okay, between 6 and 38. And pause the video, <coughs> excuse me, write that code and then come back here and I'll show you how it should look. Okay, so what did I say? Between 6 and 38? 6, 39. Okay, this is the lowest value it can be. This is one past the highest value it can be. Okay, if I run that now, you see I've got 26, I've got 33, I've got 37, I've got 18, I've got 18 again, I've got 6. I will never get a value lower than 6 or greater uh, than 38 if I do that. Simple, right? Um, there is actually something I just want to try here. Let's say I put in a third parameter. Is that going to... I genuinely have never tried this before. Um, so let's see what happens here. In theory, well, you tell me, what do you think this is doing? I've, got, I've still got my starting value and my ending value, but then I've put this third argument in here which, if you think about how it works in the range function, it steps up by two each time. So what does that mean for our random numbers? I'll keep running it a few times. I've got 28, 36, 10, 18, 38, 28, 20, 14, 20, 26, 8. What do you notice about all of those numbers? I'm going to give you the answer in 3, 2, 1. They're all even. Okay, if I start at 6 and I'm going up 2 each time, remember it generates this range of numbers. So it's, it's either going to be 6 or 8 or 10 or 12. We're never going to get any odd numbers in there. Okay, if I put 3 in there, it's going to go up by 3 each time. So it's either going to be 6 uh, or 9 or 12 or 15. Okay, they're all going to be multiples of 3. There we've got 6, we've got 24, we've got 27, we've got 15. Okay. So that's basically all there is to rand range, but that's not all that random has to offer. Um, we are going to have a, a deeper look at um, how we can select random items from a list when we look at uh, lists and data structures in a later lesson. But for now, you should be able to do a fair amount of stuff with random.randrange. In fact, here is a task that I want you to do. I want you to um, ask the user to um, guess how many times a coin will come up heads if you flip an imaginary coin um, ten times. Okay, So you're going to say to the user, how many times is it going to come up? They're going to enter their uh, their number. You're going to flip that coin ten times. You're going to count how many times it comes up heads, and then you're going to say whether the user guessed right or not. Okay, so you can pause the video, have a go at that code. Now I can get you started if you want. Obviously, I'm going to import the random. I'm going to ask the user. Um, I'm going to say times equals uh, int input. Um, how many times will it come up heads? Just move that across so you can see a bit of the Okay, so we know we're going to flip it ten times. Okay, so we know how many times we are going to repeat, which means we know what kind of loop we are going to use, right? It is a for loop. We are going to say for i in range 10. So flipping the coin 10 times. Okay. Um, now, the way that I'm going to do it, a coin has obviously got two sides. So I'm going to randomly generate a number between 0 and 1. If it comes up 0, I'm going to say that's tails. And if it comes up a 1, I'm going to say that that's heads. 
okay so I need to count how many times this is going to uh, come up heads so how many times is our random number going to be one in order to do that I'm going to need a counter I'm going to set count to zero to start off with okay and then I am going to have an if statement I am going to say if random dot rand range two Okay, remember that's going to generate a random number between 0 and 1. Uh, if random.randrange2 equals, um, what did I say, 1 is heads, right? Then uh, count plus equals 1. So we're going to add 1 to the count. Okay, once we've done that, once we've flipped it 10 times, we are then going to compare the... Um, the total of count to the number of times that was guessed. Okay, so we're going to say something like if let's move this down so we can see it. If uh, count equals times print. Well done. You were bang on. Okay. Elif count is less than times. We could say print uh, you guessed too high. And if it's not equal to it and it's not less than, we know that it's going to be greater than, so I can have an else in here. Print you guessed too low okay and then finally we'll say how many times it came up heads we can just say print the coin uh, coin oh, missed some quote marks here came up heads However many times, times. Okay. I, I mean that's kind of like a little game. It's not a particularly good game, but uh, let's let's see how it goes. So how many times will it come up heads? You know what? If I'm flipping a coin ten times, statistically, it's probably going to come up heads about five times. So I'm going to say five. Okay. I guess too high. The coin came up heads four times. I was almost there. Okay, let's let's play again. Um, maybe I'm going to go a little bit higher this time. Let's say six. Oh, there we go. I was bang on. Okay, pretty pretty fun game, right? I mean, it's hardly Dark Souls, but um, but you know, there there you go. Um, so generating random numbers um, using for loops, uh, using if statements. Um, what you could even do uh, is you could modify this program. Uh, so that it continually runs and so at the end of doing this it will say do you want to play again and the user can say yes uh, and it will do it again or they can say no and it will exit the program okay have a think about how that might work and pause the video and then if you come back I will show you are we ready have you done it does it work let's have a look I'm going to have a variable called game running and I'm going to set that to true. Okay, and then I'm going to say while game running, all of this is going to be inside my while loop. So I can select it all and then press tab to indent it all. Okay, if you want to unindent a lot of stuff, you can select it all and then press shift tab. Pretty cool, huh? So just the tab key. Um, we'll indent all of that. So we're going to keep on doing this while game running and then finally the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to ask the user um, I'm going to say again equals input uh, do you want to play again um, have a yes no input there and then we can just say if again equals uh, no then 
game running equals false. Okay, so at that point, if they type in no, we're going to set game running to false. It'll go back up here. It'll check to see if game is running. It's not, so it's going to it's going to exit. So if I run my code now, let's have a look. How many times will it come up heads? Let's say I don't know three this time. Oh, I guess too low. It came up five times. You want to play the game again? Yeah, let's play again. How many times is it going to come? Oh, let's go high. Eight. Oh, I guess too high. It came up four times. Uh, do you want to play again? Yeah, okay. Uh, five times again. There we go. We're bang on. Do you want to play again? No, I don't. So we exit. Okay. You shouldn't have had too much trouble constructing that simple program. Okay, there might have been a few areas where you messed up. There might have been a few, you might have done certain things differently, like your while loop might have been slightly different to mine. That's fine. Okay, now we're going to put input, uh, we're going to put random on the back burner now, and we are going to have a look at something called turtle. Okay, it's another module. So we are going to import turtle. Okay. Now what the turtle module does is it allows us to draw some simple graphics and um, there are these imaginary creatures called turtles where you can move them around and everywhere they go they will leave a trail behind them. Okay, So let's have a look at how that works. There's a few little things that we need to set up uh, to get this working. So the first thing we need to do is import turtle. The next thing we need to do is set up the screen and the way that we do that is we create a uh, screen object okay so be careful here we've got a capital S there I've got a lowercase s here okay so screen equals turtle dot screen uh, and then we're going to create a turtle I'm going to call my turtle Alice uh, and that is turtle dot turtle okay so we've set up our screen and we have created a turtle we're now going to make Alice do something. Okay, first of all, I'm going to make her move forward. So I'm going to say Alice dot forward 100. Move her forward 100 units. Then maybe I'm going to say Alice dot left uh, 45. So she's going to turn 45 degrees to the left, and then I'm going to say Alice dot forward. Uh, let's make her go forward 50. Okay, that's all the movement I want Alice to do. Um, the final thing that I need to do is update the screen. So I say screen dot main loop like that. Okay. There is your code. Pause the video, type that out. When you run it, it should look like this. There's Alice. Okay. You can see she has moved uh, forward there. Uh, and then she's turned 45 degrees to the left and she's moved forward again. That's it. Turtles amazing right um, so let me just go back to our code okay um, what I want you to do is I want you to write some code that is going to make Alice draw a square okay and I'll let you into a little secret you can change the color of Alice's pen uh, by doing something like this we can say Alice uh, dot pen color. Now check the spelling here because it's the American spelling. Uh, let's make sh make her draw in red. Okay. So I want you to make Alice draw a red square, and then after you've done that, make Alice draw a blue triangle. Okay. So pause the video and uh, and have a crack at getting that working. Okay. And then once you're back, say about. Now let's have a look at what you could have done. So if I say Alice dot forward 100 and then Alice dot right 90, so turning right 90 degrees and then Alice dot forward um, 100 again and then Alice dot right 90. Uh, you know what? I could just copy and paste this code here. So there's one side, there's two sides, there's three sides, there's four sides. Okay, when I run this now, there she is. She's drawn us a, a lovely little red square. Uh, <laughs> red square, comrades, yes. Um, now, obviously, if we're repeating the same lines of code, you're probably, or you should be thinking, wait a minute, we could use a loop for that. And you're absolutely right. 
Okay, if I'm drawing a square, I'm going to re be repeating these two lines of code four times. In fact, you can see that as one, two, three, four. So instead of copying them all out, I can just create a for loop. Okay, I can say for i in range four. Alice dot forward 100, Alice dot right 90. Now I also asked you to draw a blue triangle, so I can set Alice's pen color. Uh, pen color to uh, blue okay uh, and now I wanted to draw a triangle so how many sides has a triangle got that's right three so I can say for I in range three Alice dot forward let's do a hundred again okay and then Alice dot right how much is she going to turn? Well, I could ca I could work this out, right? I could. Uh, let, what's the? I'm thinking about the external angles of a triangle. They all add up to 360 degrees. So what's 360 divided by three? Why am I bothering to work that out? I could just write 360 divided by three there. Okay. Simples. Okay. So let's run this program now. There's our red uh, square, there's our blue triangle in there. Brilliant! Easy peasy, right? Um, so, your challenge now. Um, we've got a loop that draws a square. Uh, we've got a loop that draws a triangle. I now want you to write another loop that draws a um, green hexagon a green hexagon okay so have a crack at that pause it if you need to now before I do that I should probably set the pen color so Alice dot pen color uh, green uh, for iron range how many sizes does a hexagon have six and then say Alice dot forward 100 and then you know what I'm gonna make a turn left this time Alice dot left 360 divided by 6 run that code here we go square triangle hexagon easy right you all got that right yeah yeah you all got that right Cool. Okay, so your final challenge now with turtles is to ask the user how many sides they want the uh, their shape to be, and then get your turtle to draw that shape. Okay, and. Um, maybe you could ask the user um, what color they wanted the shape to be and you could change the color based on that um, you could also try changing the size alice.pen size will change the width of uh, Alice's pen if I run that you can see it's slightly thicker now okay so Ask the user how thick they want the uh, the pen to be. Ask the user what colour they want the pen to be. Ask the user how many sides they want in their shape. And then draw that shape for the user. Okay, things to bear in mind. The last line of your code should always be screen.mainloop, otherwise you're going to get some, get some errors. Okay, you need to create Alice the Turtle. Um, you could create a second turtle okay uh, what I want you to do basically is just uh, practice your loops okay and um, practice uh, experimenting um, with the turtles here's something that you could try as well just as a parting shot here we've got Alice yeah um, I am going to um, 
random get get Alice to randomly move around okay I'm gonna get her to move a certain distance a random distance between 0 and 100 and then um, turn a random amount uh, between uh, 0 and 360 degrees yeah uh, and then I am going to keep on going until Alice has traveled um, let's say 10,000 units okay so I'm gonna say distance to start off with is zero yeah while distance is less than 10,000 um, Alice dot forward uh, ooh, I need to import random random dot rand range how did I say between one and a hundred units so I can say one comma hundred and one there I'm gonna move her forward and then we're gonna say Alice dot right random uh, dot rand range uh, between uh, 0 and 300 well it's going to be between 0 and 359 so I can just put 360 in there okay um, cool she's going to keep on doing that until she's traveled 10,000 units now I'm also going to print out the distance traveled okay now that's not going to print out in the graphical window it's going to print out in my uh, in my text output down here but it's useful for um, just debugging and seeing how far she gets so let's run that and see what happens she's having a fun time spinning around there I wonder how far she's travelled. Ah, there is actually an error. What have I forgotten to do? I'll give you a clue. My distance has always been zero. What did I forget to do? I tell you, I forgot to add on the amount that she moved onto distance. Okay, so I'm going to have to change this slightly now. I'm going to say um, create a temporary variable called moved, and that's the amount that she's going. Oh, I'll, t I'll say move. The amount that she's going to move is that distance, right? So I'm going to move her forward that distance, and then I am going to add distance plus equals moved we're going to add the amount that she moved onto the distance okay so now when I run it it should eventually come to an end we hope well she's done nearly 3000 units of distance so far looking at my debug output She is halfway through her journey right now. <laughs> it's a crazy little turtle. Uh, she's three quarters of the way through and she's like disappeared off the bottom of the screen. Will she come back? That is the question. Probably unlikely at this point, but eventually Okay, so we've got up to uh, 10,001, uh, and that's where the program has has stopped. Okay, so we have looked in this episode at generating random numbers, at drawing some simple shapes using the turtle module, at importing those different modules, and we have practiced some of the loops. Okay, I set you some challenges 
you know, to create a program which will ask the user how thick they want their pen to be, what colour they want the turtle to draw, and how many sides they want in the shape, and then it's going to draw that shape for them. Um, I have asked you to just have a play around and see what sorts of uh, wonderful artwork you can produce using the turtles. In the next video, we're going to pull together all of the skills that you've learned so far and we are going to make a very very simple text-based game and then I'm going to set you a challenge to make a slightly less simple text-based game okay so tune in next time the end